was popping, was popping, was popping. Welcome, Nikki and Moose. I'm Nikki. That's Moose. What's up, Moose? What up, y'all? And on this episode, we're going to be talking about what is considered too early when it comes to monetizing your brand. Do we listen to the gurus and wait and wait and continue to wait? Or do we monetize right now? We're going to talk about it. We're also going to talk about the 80 20 rule. If you don't know about that, you better listen to this. The full breakdown of the new Netflix series, Alexander, and the lessons that was learned in that whole series. And then a very interesting question. Is Gary V over with? We're going to talk about it. Moose, how we feel about this episode? Yeah, no, I'm loving it, man. These are some really important questions that you're going to need to answer for yourselves along the journey. So make sure you tap in. Let's get into this intro. Two kids from Queens, cut from a different cloth. Now joining forces, helping you to elevate your personal brand. Yeah, I'm talking about Nikki and Moose, bringing you a never before seen perspective into the mindset, the mentality, the behaviors, the driving force. But more importantly, the stories behind the people and brands that you know and love the most. And of course, this episode is powered by Ecamm Live. Whether you're streaming, recording, podcasting, or presenting, Ecamm can do it all. You see, with our podcast is powered by Ecamm Live, of course. So we're doing videos, we got overlays, we got voice isolation, audio isolation, it does it all. And we're giving away 14 days on us if you go to www.nickyandmoose.com slash ecamm that's e-c-a-m-m for that 14 day trial hello moose how we feeling man i'm feeling pretty good uh you know i'm back in that mode actually i'm about to send you something i want your opinion live on camera okay uh yeah this is unplanned you know it's like i was like yo should i share it during the pregame i'm like no nah, i'm gonna just wait i'm actually gonna get her opinion live on camera so when i send it to you you cannot say what it is um yeah it's just i, I want to see something i'm just gonna try something here so i'm gonna send it to you here in a second but okay. let me fact, let me send it let me, let me let me send it now let me send it now i just i want you to zoom in on this see if it's clear and then um but you can't you can't say nothing okay it's I a can't secret say nothing for so our audio people just, we, i'm sorry audio i people. just i yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just i just want you oh and don't show it to them either but i just want to see your reaction on camera <laughs> I just want to see your reaction. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make sure I I I let you know. And uh, <laughs> for those of you listening, she has a lot of different faces. <laughs> yeah, I want to cry because yeah. I can't say anything. Like it's not even like. That's just... <laughs> okay. Oh man, I was like, hey, before. Before this goes public, I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to bring it to the pod in a very unique way, uh, without saying anything. But uh, at least getting your facial expression, because I know you know what I'm saying you you are a person of many expressions. So I wanted I wanted that live on camera. Yeah, yeah. It's like too so, much. Uh, yeah. It's too much. It's too because it's, it's like there's one part that's like oh, and there's like the other part that's like shocking, and so it's like right. oh. We fig we figure we do a nice balance to it, you know. It's like, hey, you got a little, a little, a little sweet, a little sour. Well, I don't know if that is sour, but you know, it's a nice, it's a nice balance. So, yeah, shout shout out to uh, all of our listeners who are like, what the heck are you guys talking about? This is three minutes into the episode. Uh, what are you guys talking about? I have so many You'll questions, soon but find my out. questions will be yeah. I just yeah, maybe we'll save it for the after show if it airs late enough. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll um we'll let you know at least maybe I just by know next episode for sure. I just want to know if there's a rollout. Yeah, there's a rollout. Yeah, I mean kind of. Yeah. Okay. So by I'm next done. episode for questions. sure, ev everyone yeah everyone will know what's up. So yeah, just wanted to uh to share that off. But other than that, man, things are great. I do I do have a lesson, not so much a show that I tapped into or anything like that this week, but we really have been diving into the numbers um and to to make connection around what what matters most and i gotta tell you of course the 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 big thing i'm talking about right now is the the challenge that nikki and i are involved in for e and the cool thing is 
uh, it's reminding me again of, of, a, of, a, of a principle that I've shared on here many times, the 80-20 principle. And you could spin it many different ways. We've had close to 20,000 people signed up. But when you look at the most active, the most engaged, it's the top 20% who, who have committed to, you know, let's call it a, a, some form of financial commitment. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not so much about the money for this because the, the financial number itself was very small, but it just shows that that principle stays true and true and true. So like for me, it's just always that, I, and I can't tell you that I do it intentionally. Like, oh, I bet these people are doing this, this and this because of that. But I just so happen to, oh, yeah, let me just make a connection. Let me see, let me run some numbers and see where it's at. And I kid you not, I was like, oh, the 80-20% or the 80-20 rule is also alive here where the top 20% of whatever it is drive most of what you see. So yeah, interesting to, to see it at something of that magnitude, but yeah, keep keep focusing on that Pareto principle is, uh, is definitely what I'll say because I think it matters in so many different ways. You'll notice, you'll, you'll probably see maybe like the top 20% of your uh, followers drive 80% of your engagement or the top 20% of your clients drive 80% of your revenue or the top 20% of your efforts produce 80% of your results. It's like, it's just a crazy thing. And, and when you get out of thinking that you need to be for everyone and everybody doing everything, and you, it's a balance of both faith and discipline because it takes a little bit of sacrifice to say, I'm gonna let go of doing all of these other things to focus on that top 20%. But once you lock in, it's a matter of time before the, sh the results show. So. Yeah, somebody, somebody needed to hear that. No, somebody needed to hear that. Well, so now to have a to try and have a regular episode. Right, after that, I, I know it's like I, be a I pay, bit of, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I didn't pay attention to nothing you said. I know, I know, I know, I know. I can tell, I can tell. I'm like, but um, you know, I still got to show. I still got to show the peeps. Fine, yeah. fine. Okay, so, <laughs> so what I'm gonna do since we're sharing secrets. So Sarah's sharing secrets, mm. okay? Can I look at my phone now? Is you, this, you're going to look at your to phone. To me? You're going to look at your phone. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. You've been talking about this. This got goosebumps. <laughs> Holy moly, guacamole. Let's go. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> I was not expecting this at all. When did you go here? I have questions now. Can I say, can I ask questions? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Can I ask questions? <laughs> I got questions now. Oh, so man. My, my audio people, um, so, like I said, since since we're sharing uh, uh, secrets, I sent him something. Right. But I won't reveal that till the after show. So this is a a episode of just uh, facial expressions and uh, yeah, wow. just reactions. Yummy. You know I mean? That's so awesome. Yeah, I got so many questions. The view is just fire. Wow. It's like a mix of water and yeah, that's okay. All right. Dang. Anyways, oh. um, my week was was pretty cool, right? I uh binged on Alexander. Have you seen that trending on Netflix? Mm -mm, no. So uh I have a big random like i don't know uh get to know nikki situation i love like greek mythology uh and and the gods and all that great stuff i love that when i was a kid that was the only uh only topic that i ever got a's in it was the oh, wildest wow. thing when it came to all of that stuff so uh alexander came out it was a really dope docuseries right it was one of those things that not the typical because history stuff is boring to me right i can't always watch the really geeky historians speak about everything that happened right i can't do it however what they did was really dope where they did have those geeky people not not to insult them but you know they they, they geek out on this stuff but then they also had actors play out the whole situation right so 
one thing that I love, well, there's a few lessons. One, uh, your mommy will make you believe that you are everything in the world. Okay. You know how. Oh, swear to God. Yeah. Like <laughs> if you're, if you have a mom that's like, yo, you could do anything in the world and you actually move that way. You have a really good mom. I have one of those. I know Moose has one of those. Really good mom. Oh, absolutely. Now, yeah. Alexander's mom was like, huh, you, your dad, you think you know your dad? Mm -mm. You're the son of Zeus. Okay. So now this man moves like tuh, I'm untouchable. So he was like the king of this like little small place. Right. And he has to uh, defeat Persia like so massive. Mm -hmm. Right. Isaiah will probably put the the kind of the map just so you can see it. Right. So. It's interesting to see the journey once something is planted in one's head of like you could do anything in the world because you, my friend, are different and I want you to move that way. It all comes stems from what your parents say. So, yeah, shout out to all the parents out there. Right now. Another thing that I, I love is before every fight, he went to seek knowledge. Right. So it wasn't more of like. I'm going, I have a goal, boom. Like at each major milestone, he went and he uh, sought out some type of information. So like before the first fight, he went to Troy and went to the tomb of Achilles, who for those people don't know, is a, like a really dope warrior. You couldn't defeat him unless you hit him in the Achilles heel. That's why we hear that situation because it was a whole person right the the next time he went to egypt right he loved egypt and they actually made him a pharaoh right oh wow yeah so they he he was like yo i love you guys i want like i want people to know who what egypt is like is i'm not trying to rule you i'm trying to make the people know because i respect it right so he went there he went to seek more um, information as well as just understanding the culture. Then, so he became a pharaoh physically. Then he went to this like sand, really desert part that you had to go spiritually. Like, and he went there, mm. got hit all he needed to, and then he defeated whatever he needed to defeat. So each thing that you want to do there has to be a checkpoint of knowledge. One thing that I learned there, right? Um, another thing that <clears throat> what, what I learned from there was do the opposite of what worked in the past. So in the first fight, like what people are known for is like at, at dawn, they go fight, right? He got close to to the fighting grounds and he was like, to rile up the troops. We got to go now. They're like, no, we do this in the morning. And he's like the, the, the general guy who was talking was like, yo, I have experience in, uh, in fighting. You don't. Yeah. But last time I checked, that was a loss, right? That was a loss. All right. So we're going to go now. Right. So doing the opposite of that also where normally like the main person, they stay in the middle of these big fights. Like you see those, all these people in the front, he, the main person, the king, whatever stays in the middle. Normally he goes straight at it. He goes to the center. I'm fighting. I'm going straight to where we need to where other people would stay in the middle for the simple fact you could see everything where he goes in a thought process of, yeah, I can see everything, but I'm able to see the different pockets instead of waiting from seeing it from behind and seeing it from a worldview. I can see the different pockets to go through and get to the person. Right. So doing things uh, the opposite 
of what worked before is another lesson that I learned. Uh, main one is the kid mentality, right? Meaning uh, he was, I think he had to be in his 20s at the time, or he was just younger than everybody. And he was not afraid of anything or trying anything doesn't have any experience. So he has to build the experience where his main general was always cautious, right? It was like, yo, I don't think this is going to work. No, this is not going to work. This is not. And he was like, Psh, I'm going to go anyways. You follow me, you follow me. You don't, you don't. I'm going to go. Right. Yeah. And which for me always makes me think about like, yo, do not like we as we get older we allow our experiences and what we've learned to get in the way of maybe our instinct and so sometimes yeah. we need to become a kid again and just go and just try it and what could happen we we go out like we get maybe a little cut and maybe but at the end of the day we're trying these things that could possibly work and the way he moved was like even at even at closer to the end and not to spoil it i'm sorry i'm trying not to but it is what it is like he wasn't settling he was like all right i got all of persia we're gonna get the world now hmm. like but you have yeah. everything it, no no we're gonna we're gonna go for more. I think I, I think we can do more. I'm not. Mm, you know what I mean? So that 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 series was was really really good. In like the storytelling was great. The still showing kind of real life because they were still digging up. Like there was a city called Alexandria, and they're still digging it up trying to find artifacts uh, about Alexander. It's just a really good docuseries that if you if you want to see that if you like stuff like that especially just learning from a really great leaders go check alexander i learned a lot that's dope yeah i don't even know how i was able to say all that because i'm still on the picture uh, did a phenomenal I'm, job yeah did yeah phenomenal I'm job i'm i'm processing on my end i'm still just <laughs> i'm trying to understand the scenery i'm like man how did that wow yeah <laughs> Um, <laughs> I do have a, I do have a question for you. I do have a question for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Man, it, CJ asked me a question, and I put it on Threads, and I actually wanted your take on it too. Okay. So, do you believe that Diddy can come back? Uh, man, so I'm not super in tune with everything that's been happening. I've heard some wild stuff. Again, TikTok is like my number one news source right true. now for, what you heard. yeah, yeah, for really for, for like culture related things. And what I saw, I was just like, whoa. Um, and isn't it weird that these videos like that usually come up at the time when you know you shouldn't be scrolling? It's like, I saw a comment. It said, when you start to see videos like this, that's when you know you should get off of TikTok. It was like 11 o'clock at night. I couldn't sleep. Here I am just, you know, scrolling away. And I'm like, what? Whoa. And then it has the part one, part two, part three. And I'm going through it. And I'm just shocked to hear the names associated with it. Uh, but yeah, that's I, honestly, I mean, I, I, I'm still on the fact, like, I hope it's just not true. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's, that's the that's the part that I'm on. Like I hope it's not true. You know, it's it's unfortunate to see something turn that dark. Um, you know, because there were some rumors around, you know, the whole Biggie situation mm -hmm. and his involvement and what happened and whatnot. So I, I don't, you know, it's it's a lot. It's a lot there that, you know, hopefully, um, hopefully it's not true. I think that's the only thing I could say because I'm just not super educated on, on the hookup. But yeah, that's that's unfortunate. So, so for those who who don't know, it's just for context. So, I don't know where his uh, ex girl uh, Cassie hit him with a major like lawsuit that was y'all look it up. It 
what was being accused is crazy, right? The problem is he, it was a quick payout. It was like next day, right? Really? Yes, it was the next day. It got settled very quickly. And so uh, even though they put out a statement saying a payout doesn't necessarily mean, uh, you know, a, like admitting to guilt, guilt, but it's still not, you know, a good look because literally it was like the next day or even hours, right? And then, of course, uh, multiple accusations came out. And and Diddy's been quiet. He had to. Just quiet. So C was like, yo, if, if Diddy's team hired us, what would you, what would you do? Mm. I was, and I was like, first off, oh, that's fire. I, I don't, I don't, I don't want no parts of that. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, at the end of the day, I think the only way that he can come back is who co-signs him. If he does a huge festival with major names that back him up, I think that would start to calm it down a little bit. I wouldn't say it fixed everything. Because I don't know if he can go to a Gale King because that clearly doesn't do anything. I love you, Meg the Stallion. But, I mean, R. Kelly, like, it just doesn't do anything, right? You become a meme. And so, who do you talk to in that situation as far as clearing out your name? Don't know. C was like, maybe a, a docuseries, right? just netflix let me narrate my own situation and people will uh tune into that he can monetize on that situation i think that's a good look but i i said he got to be quiet and c was like nah he can't be quiet i was like uh he should be quiet he needs to be quiet but that's what i was yes. like if you knew about the the situation i would have loved your take on it because it's uh, I think he posted past this past week, and he turned off his comments. It's just quiet. It's just, it's not, it's no bueno. It's no bueno. And he's too big of a staple in hip hop. But you know, it's it's weird. It's a weird situation. So, <sighs> Diddy's team. Oh, I'm I hope seeing. Uh, you seeing it? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, I'm seeing it. it says it it was settled the day after the lawsuit. Mm hmm Yep. So oh. Diddy's team, uh, y'all got some work on your hands. Uh, I I'm yeah. This is all the, that's all I would say, because I don't wanna the the team has nothing really to do with the person. This is where you have to separate the person and the art. You feel me? That's the that's that's where I don't like these situations because from a like a branding and business side, all his deals were canceled. Yeah, like, yeah all no, his once deals. These he types got, of things get attached to your names. Yes, yeah, not yeah, a good look. People were dropping him left and right, and so this is where it's like, oh. The, the personal the personal side of you when it comes to a personal brand that builds such a business empire like Diddy, like the personal side will forever take over. And so it's so important to not have skeletons. It's just so important not to have skeletons. Yeah. The way this 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 day and age is is just it's just bad. It's just bad. It's just bad. I don't know. I don't know. It's one of those things. Yep. Sorry. Sorry. I'm still on this picture. I don't know how we're supposed to get through this podcast. I'm sorry, all my audio and video people. Um this is yeah. Anyways, okay, let's just you know what? Let's just go into the meat and potatoes because I got some we got a lot to talk about. We got, we got 
Yeah. Like, so you want me to have a podcast after this? this is wild. All right. Anyways, <laughs> so is there such thing as monetizing too soon? Okay. So you're finally ready to turn your passion into profit, but then you hear these lovely social media gurus that talk about business that say, hey, hold off, grow, build that trust, build that audience before you do anything, right? Here is a clip that kind of totalizes what we're trying to say. I know you've heard about how Alex and Mosey didn't sell anything to his audience in the beginning and as a result created enormous amounts of goodwill. Or you've heard Gary Vee tell creators that the longer you wait to monetize, the more money you'll make. But with all due respect to both of these people, here's why they're both wrong. You're not Alex and Mosey. Or Gary Vee. Alex alone had a net worth north of $50 million before he ever started building his personal brand. He knows how to monetize extraordinarily well. So when the time comes for him to leverage his audience, he will smash it out of the park. But if you wait to monetize, you'll still be stuck with your metaphorical training wheels on, wondering why everyone thinks your offer is dog because monetizing is a skill and learning a new skill requires being a beginner. And it's a lot easier to get your beginner reps out of the way when you have 500 followers than it is when you have 500,000. But learning the skill of monetization is not the only reason. And this second reason has much bigger consequences. You need to monetize as early as humanly possible so you build an audience that expects it from you. The horror story example of this going incredibly wrong is the YouTube channel Yes Theory. They built their entire audience based on the pre sense of we're just doing this for the love of it. They would launch their self-funded films and put a free or pay what you want button and that would be their monetization strategy. They would constantly tell their audience about how altruistic they were but when the time inevitably came and they launched their first course because surprisingly running a business that makes no money isn't exactly sustainable, they received a tidal wave of hate. They built an audience that expected free and then wondered why no one wanted to pay for their product. So now the burning question, when to monetize, is what we're going to talk about today, right? Unpacking what it takes to turn that passion into a steady stream of income, whether you have a nine to five or you're an entrepreneur trying to figure out the when, let's just dive into when is the right time. Because my man said a lot and gave an amazing case study. I wanted your mm. take on uh, one, the uh, great people, great business minds saying, hey, uh, five years, then monetize. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, so the the full length of that video is it's it's a really dope video, by the way. So shout out to you for, uh, you know, for for using that as the, the part to start this conversation. I'm really torn with something like this because I still do believe when it comes to the online space, the longer that you can wait to ask, the more that you can ask for. I do truly believe that, especially in in today's world, right? Because of what happened in 2020, and it was a natural, I think, reaction to what happened in the world. COVID came around, the pandemic hit, people realized that their jobs, their lives are not sustainable. And so everyone rushed online to make money. It had to be done. Some people unfortunately abused what was happening, but call it good, call it bad, call it whatever you want. At the end of the day, social media has made people tired of being sold to online because the platforms are no longer about being social or sharing your lives or sharing quality information or helping people out. It became a way of making money strictly that. And so it kind of tainted the view of what people expected when they come online or interact with a brand. Now, I understand what he was saying about Yes Theory, but Yes Theory is like a super, I don't want to say super old brand, but they've been around for quite a bit of time, right? Like they're they're dating back to a, a bit of time. So you have to be mindful when you get information like this, because the world where business and marketing was at the time that Yes Theory was at their peak, it's not the same way it is today, right? Like I remember when they did that 
a helicopter jump with Will Smith, if you remember, right? And so it may seem like these guys are not monetizing, but let me tell you something. The millions of views that they were racking up on YouTube, they absolutely were monetizing. Yeah. So we have to yeah, take that channel. into consideration. Now, exactly, right? So it's like they're racking up hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views across various platforms, Facebook, YouTube, right, et cetera. So they are absolutely monetizing. Now, they may not be monetizing in the form of a course or a digital product, right? And so that's why when they came out and maybe asked for that course, there was that response to it. So you got to really dive into the context and say, okay, from the beginning, and that's why, you know, I think it's, it's good to think of it th this way. When you set, set to start your brand, you have to think about, okay, what type of brand or business do I want? And we asked that question on the question of the week a couple of weeks ago. And I said, are you in the business of content or do you use content for your business? You need to like that helps you to find out, okay, what side of the coin am I on? Because if you're in the business of content, then yes, theory did it absolutely right. They use views. They built the heck of a following. They were getting a ton of viewership and I'm sure they were getting a lot of brand collaborations. They traveled the world. They had a good old fun, probably, you know, I don't know what they're up to now, but I know one of them is Egyptian. So shout out to uh, the good brother over there. You know, I know that for a fact because I, I remember. I okay, remember, but nobody, uh, I know one of them is Egyptian. <laughs> shout out to you. Everybody else. But hello, the only reason I know of y'all is because one of y'all is Egyptian. It's because one of y'all is Egyptian. Exactly. No, no, I'm just <laughs> no, 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 no. But I'm just saying like, but you get what I'm saying, right? Like it's. Uh, no. The context <laughs> of she's like, no, don't don't bring me into this one. You're on your own, buddy. <laughs> like, no, don't reel me in on this one. Um, no, I get it. I get nah, it. it was just, that was that was yeah, yeah. that was <laughs> yeah. Good time. Good time. Uh, yeah. No, nah, the con the context, man. You, it, it all comes down to the context. And I, I'm again not not to kind of tune my own horn or whatever the saying is, but I think that question really sets the mark to help you to know what side am I playing on. Because making that drastic jump, let's say you are in the business of content and you have to jump in and do, you know, an additional business stream because times are getting rough and you're noticing maybe your views or whatnot are starting to decline or the platforms are not as friendly to you as they once were. Then, yeah, that desperate jump can turn off your audience where your audience starts to say, like, yo, what the heck are you doing? This is not the relationship that we had for so many years. So I think that's one way for sure to look at it. Yeah, it's it's a little bit tricky, right? Because I don't want to discredit the people who are saying, hey, just wait, give away everything for free and things like that. Um, just like how we spoke about last week, how it's important to leverage free and paid situations. The people who are normally saying, hey, just build it, you know, gain the followers, gain the trust, that whole nine, nine out of 10 times, they have a mainstream of income that allows them to say that. So we look at uh, Alex Hermosi, he uh, has businesses. Like he doesn't necessarily need his personal brand to make money. He uses his personal brands for leads, Gary V. He makes money off of all his businesses. This is more of a, and we're going to talk about it later, but that's another way of leads to possibly get more businesses because he does also um, partner and acquire other different types of businesses as well. Uh, Grant Cardone makes money off of real estate and now he has a personal brand and, and we're seeing more and more uh, Jeff Bezos, Mark, all these people. Elon Musk does not need social media, even though he right. owns one platform. He doesn't need social media. These people are millionaires before even thinking about content. So the the like with with Gary V and, and Alex Hermo and not to just like single them out, I'm just going based off the the video and things like that. One will say, do 
40 pieces of content a day. And the other one would say, hey, I spent 40K on media alone this month. They could do that because one, they have teams. Two, they have a business to fund all this advice that they're giving. So when we're listening to that type of advice, they're speaking to a certain audience. They're not speaking to the masses. They're speaking to other successful entrepreneurs, business owners, you know, people who have that kind of money to be like, you know what, if you really want to do this, this is where it's at. Now, granted, having a personal brand, especially in this day and age, is a must. If you are a business owner, a nine to five, uh, an aspiring entrepreneur, it doesn't matter. A personal brand is a must for one, especially if you're a business owner, to bring leads to yeah. free leads, organic leads, global leads to your business. Without a doubt, it's something you need to do. But when you're listening to the social media gurus, these business gurus, you have to really pay attention to what they're saying and understanding their background. I'm not saying they're wrong, but that particular parts of information that they're giving out is not for everybody. But because of the funds that they have and the influence that they have, it reaches the masses so they think it's for them, right? So mm -hmm. that's, I, I wanted to address that part because we we see the these tops personal brands saying these things and it, and then we get conflicted of what, what to do. I mm -hmm. really wish that there were more personal brands that would talk to the team of one. Talk to the nine to fivers coming into entrepreneurship or coming into at least a personal brand. I would love the small businesses, like just small teams. What do you do with that? How does one business owner do turn into a personal brand? The benefits of that, right? But this is why you have this podcast. I'm just saying. You know. But that's more realistic and hence I would say one of the major problems of social media today is that we look too far ahead. We see those people who are super successful and we lean too much on that advice and it paralyzes yeah. us because we're not, we don't have the resources or the funds to what supposedly to create a successful brand that will then benefit our, our business. I don't have so much of this money to do ad spent. I don't have so much of this money to create all this type of content. So give me a happy medium. No? Okay, cool. Whatever. So that's mm. that's one part. Um do you feel that the these types of of personal brands who are saying these these types of things I know, um, I, I believe every type of influencer that's coming, that have been business owners and things like that, they do all at some point talk about how they create content and how they've built their personal brand and everything like that. Do you believe that information is for everybody? From which part? Like the, the way to go about how they go how they give advice model about in the it. content yeah how they give advice about yeah it. i i i mean to your point and and it's funny because i remember years ago being on calls and trainings where at the time people were referencing gary v's advice it was like hey document don't create and you need 19 story pieces and you need you know it, it was all those at least that was his model for doing it and you would always say hey I wouldn't recommend that you start off that way because you got to remember he has a team. Mm -hmm. And I think even, there's a lot of people who probably did not understand the extent of what you meant when you said that, because maybe they didn't fully see what was all the pieces that go into creating that many pieces of content. The easiest part of it, and, and, and I say that with a grain of salt, so take that into consideration, is 
turning on a camera and recording the quote unquote, however many pieces you had to, you know, create or document in that case. So it's interesting, but yeah, I think that definitely I'm, I'm in agreement with what you said. People don't really pay attention to the context of what's being said and how that might translate to them in terms of, wait, do I have a budget for 40 grand or a $40,000 budget every month to invest into, into content and media? So, yeah, I don't know that people really pay attention to that because it just looks so easy. Right. That's probably why, you know, everyone is attracted to, to personal brands to some extent, right? It's like, I got to make the hard work look easy and then tell you about how difficult it is later. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I think it's like, that's what makes people essentially become even more diehard fans. They're like, man, I, I got to respect that because I can imagine what went into it. So going to the second part of, of the video, as far as like when to monetize, like in your head for, especially like, for instance, for the coaches that you work with at extreme execution, uh, slight plug, but is there advice that you give them as far as like, okay, when you reach this part, then introduce these types of products and which do you tell them to go for the gusto and like here, full blown, uh, full package, mm. there you go. Or is there like a process? Yeah, no, there's definitely a process because you got to think about it. It depends on what you want to monetize, mm -hmm. right? There are some people who have a specific product, sometimes even a service, let's call it um, a software or a SaaS model that they can monetize day one. That's, that's just their model. They're in that position. They have the credibility. They have the experience. They have the confidence. They have the know-how. They're just entering the space and they're able to provide value to customers right away. So if you're really coming from, so like you got to think about it like this, if you're bringing a background or, or an experience of 10, 15 years from one industry, and you're now just trying to bring that industry online and you have a, a full blown product cycle. And I, I don't want to say product cycle. I, I guess I'm looking for the word like what you have fits the marketplace and the needs of the people in, in, in the area that you're trying to produce. It makes sense to come into the market ready to sell right away. I, I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. Now you do have to double your efforts to grow your audience because you're, you're gonna hit that glass ceiling if you're not growing your audience at the rate that you expect to grow your business. Because if there is no audience growth, there is no lead generation, and essentially if there's no lead generation, there's no business. That's why those guys are always so focused on, hey, let me expand the reach of my audience. And just by simply keeping myself on camera and wearing a specific hat that represents my company, I know I'm going to spill over and help produce the clients that I eventually want to work with anyway, right? So I think that's part of it. Other people come into the marketplace. And like I said, they're still in that transition from what happened in COVID or even slightly. And they're like, man, I see what so-and-so is doing. I want to do it. Or I, I, I feel that I'm ready to pursue that next phase of my career and maybe my, my dreams to some extent, but they don't have the confidence. They don't have the credibility just yet. They haven't racked up enough wins or momentum to say, I'm going to offer something to someone. And when I get someone to say yes, I'm going to make sure I provide and fulfill that value. And so that's why a lot of those people would say, no, stay out of the market a little bit, build your wins, get your credibility, build those results, get some testimonials, get some wins under your belt before you can go out and open your doors to sell. So that's, that's really the balance. It's like, there's a context of, I, I put extra weight on credibility because I think that matters mm -hmm. because it's it's it talks to you gotta remember these are real people who are giving you their money their hard earned money and you you have to treat that with a certain level of you know respect to provide what you said you're going to be able to do for them agreed agreed I think I don't think that it's too there's a specific time to monetize right because like how we spoke about with last week with the cycle of followers 
there's still kind of a cycle of followers when it comes to the conversion way of things. Because let's say you start out on any of these platforms and depending on the platform, they're searching, possibly searching for this particular content. So there's already a pain, a need, a desire of, I need the solution for this. If you happen to, to cater to that particular pain point in the manner that they need, some people, yes, I need to get to know you a little bit more. I need, I need to trust you. I may need to binge on some of your content, but there's some that's like, okay, you got it. Hello. Card ready. But in your yeah. head, you may be like, well, let me get up to 10,000 followers. Let me get to 10,000 subscribers. And then I can start thinking about monetizing. Right. And, and I'm definitely talking about from a side of how do we turn this into a business than necessarily too much of a, a content creator learning how to monetize because we've covered that on past uh, podcast episodes. This one is literally how do I get a product or a service to come out? Like if, if yeah. at the end of the day, I'm really trying to sell something. Is it too early? Is it too late? Is there a threshold to do this? Whatever. It goes more on, I have to understand the cycle of followers. There's some people that are going to need to be a little bit more nurtured than those people who are just ready with the credit card. So what is the content that I am creating that is going to allow them to know that I'm spe specifically speaking to them? I'm, uh, addressing their problem, right? So it's for you. You have this particular problem. I'm going to allow you to try to do it on your own because I don't want you to think I'm just here for your money. So here is it on your own. But the end part, the system part, the uh, true solution part, I have that over here. And like starting small, if you're just starting, then what is your kind of like your beginner product or a service that you can kind of test out to see if your audience is is the right audience, right? Starting small, mm -hmm. being transparent about why this product is being made. There should be content about the journey of this product or service. There should be behind the scenes. There should be, hey, I'm shipping this out now, or I'm I'm starting to set up this one on one right now. Get, see behind the scenes of that being transparent about what you're actually offering so people can feel a little bit more comfortable with it and then right. the money that you get i would say reinvest if you're if you're yeah. making money from social media reinvest it in social media so meaning reinvest it in a uh, better camera better lights better mic you know props like tripods and things like that whatever it is to kind of level up your content like kind of one percent but i think there's a yeah. is there is a a process of let me nurture but let me already have something i don't care what mm -hmm. it is something that is can collect the the credit card already i mean right yeah and i'm gonna be honest a lot of you guys need to ask yourselves can you afford to wait you know, mm. like you got, you got to be real with yourself because we live in a world with real responsibilities. And sometimes we like to, and I don't know that we do this intentionally. Sometimes it's a level of hope and optimism, maybe a bit of being naive to some extent that we think social media is just going to hand over the keys to our future and our dreams and goals. And it's going to be a happy ever after. And that's not the, that's not always the case because it is a competitive ma marketplace out here. If you're not really lined up or, or thinking through your positioning correctly, you will fall into some challenges. And so you have to ask yourself, can I afford to wait? Can I afford to invest all this time, effort and energy and not make an offer? Some people can, a lot of people can't. And in either case, I don't think one is better than the other or one is worse than the other, but you need to know the answer for yourself and say, 
what am I going to do? What's my strategy? If I am going to wait, how long are you going to wait for? All right. Because if you go in there with that expectation of I'm going to get an immediate return and it doesn't happen, I think that's where you see some short lived or some short life cycles of brands who end up just jumping from wagon to wagon. Mm -hmm. But that's an important question that people should ask themselves too. Yeah. Cause it's not, there's, there's, there's certain outliers. There's the, and that's 1% Absolutely. of the people Absolutely. that, that you're seeing that is like come out the gate. Boom. Okay. We're good. Majority of people, it's a journey. you you, I think was what I like about the internet now is that we're starting to hear more stories of the overnight success that took 10 years. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. The, the, the people are starting now just to hear about this, uh, this person or this artist or this, you know, business, but then come to find out this, this person has been doing it for like 10 years. And so, you know, it, but from front facing value now without knowing anybody's back end story we're like oh they they just came out and it's super successful i could do the same exact thing and that's why it gets a little gray to where yes look at what's out there and collect certain data points that can help you in your journey but get out of your mind that it's going to be the same journey like you are meant to have your own journey that will one day be documented to share with other people of like, yo, you did it this way to get your first sale. You got this to get your 10th sale. You got this to finally sell out. You got this. You did this. This was the type of launch that you did, you know. Um, but at the same time, it goes. We have to steer the course of like. I got to do this and have the patience like Moose is talking about, but also not be so hard on ourselves. Yeah. Because that's another thing. Yeah. Cause you're, you will talk yourself out of it. If you're too hard on yourself, that goes along with the patience, have patience and have, and, and have grace for yourself. But that's, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Wow, that's good. <laughs> So overall, we're saying uh, is never like too early to monetize. You can monetize at day one. Getting your your systems in place is going to be one of the biggest things. You know, are you are you selling something? If so, like what is the platform that you're you're bringing people on? Are you selling digital products? Are you selling an actual physical product? Are you using Shopify? Are you just going on Wix and selling, setting up a shop? You know, are you doing click funnels? Are you doing uh, any of those the high level? What whatever your your platform is going to be, maybe concentrate on that. I, I've been really breaking down even for myself, like what is the product and what is the content that is going to be around that particular product instead of. Let me create the content and just put out whatever type of content and then mm -hmm. eventually get you to hone in on a product, right? So think of the product, create the content, get your systems in place to monetize because people, especially like YouTube, we're looking at, we're, we're literally searching for these topics. You have a good yeah. video. I'm hooked. I don't. I didn't even look at all your past videos. You said exactly what I needed. Where do I go? Where do, and sometimes it's a bad thing. Some, sometimes that's a bad thing. But if, you, if you're if you speaking to me and I need you, I'm going to buy it off top. There's buyers yeah. like that, people. Yeah. Absolutely. So monetize now. If you didn't set it up, monetize now. Okay? Now, um... Random, random, super side note. Shout out to Bima, okay? Uh, Isaiah will probably put him on, on the screen. I don't know if you follow Bima. Do you follow Bima? Mm, no. He, he's like our unofficial creator of the week right now because still I'm kind of like sore off of this creator week situation. However, he covered uh, DJ Khaled, 
Okay. Have you been paying attention to what's happening in Khaled with the Gatorade and the Tommy Hill figure? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So he has this Tommy Hill figure collaboration. He's coming out of the archives. And of course, Khaled golfs. So it's just, we the best on top of some Hill figure stuff. Okay. Bima brought up a really good uh, thought process of it just feels old. Like, is anybody really checking for Tommy Hilfiger? Like, who he's handing it out to is those people who used to rock Tommy Hilfiger. He did give it to Travis Scott, so that's a little bit of a younger crowd, right? But it doesn't... They, this is where is the nostalgic marketing working and why it's just why why are we why are we doing tommy polos why i'm yeah. so confused so i wanted your take real quick if you saw the tommy hill figure situation and and like your initial thoughts yeah, yeah, I I saw I saw the one where he specifically handed it out to Ludacris, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, that's interesting. I mean, I didn't think I didn't think too deep into it. Um, I connected it with the golf, mm -hmm. like the you know this idea of him going golfing. Now, now that I think about it more closely, what doesn't make sense is that I don't know that Tommy Hilfiger was ever a golfing brand. Like I, I can't make that connection that it was ever used for golfing, right? Like it's a, it's a, it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting look there. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, Khaled, Khaled has some, some cleanup to do with the people, man. I gotta be honest with you. Like I know with the Palestine his, thing. uh, yeah, of course. Like he, he I mean, I, I, and I've, I've been on here saying I, many times saying I love Khaled and what he's about. He's infectious with his energy and what he does, but he's got some cleanup to do with that. And I don't know that people are going to, uh, at least, you know, the Middle Eastern, the Middle Eastern crowd are going to support him the way they once did. So, okay. So, because you, br you bring up a good point, right? Does he have cleanup to do amongst his own people or to the masses? Because I don't know. No, I think know. it's to his own people. Okay, so from his own people. But is his own... Yeah. This is, this is just an honest question. Do you believe that his own people had a huge part of the success that of Khaled's success? Because I, I asked that. I don't... I asked that only because maybe it's not a priority to him. Not saying it's fair. Not saying it's right. But maybe it's not a priority to him because the that's not what kind of contributed to his full-blown global success but i'm not saying that he should totally negate it but it could that be a why he hasn't prioritized that or haven't even yeah. addressed it because of the brands that he's connected to with it 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 makes sense and i mean like for example he's done he's been very open and about broadcasting the culture like the middle eastern culture mm -hmm. as part of who he is right and like you can't take that right away from someone you can't say hey you messed up so i'm going to take the right away or the right away from you to speak about your origin story like i don't think anyone or any group of people own the right to rob someone to speak about their origin, where they're from, how they grew up, where their family is, their roots, right? I don't, I don't, I don't think that's the truth. But because he's becoming more open with it, I mean, especially in the times leading up to it, he has has opened up about Palestine and being from Palestine and the food of Palestine and the tradition and mm -hmm. you know him being so open about God. Like, you know, I think that is probably why people started paying attention. Now, I got to tell you something. This next generation of Middle Eastern, uh, not just influencers, but the masses, they are they are something else. Like they they are like they they're just different. Like I think my my generation, 
was still like, man, we don't really belong. Yes, we're Middle Eastern, but we live in America. So there was that walking very carefully, not wanting to mess anything up or bother anyone. But this, this younger generation, I mean, I don't know what their exact age would be, but they're really owning the culture, the roots, the faith, they're promoting it on social. And now it's so, it's so crazy, even for me watching from afar, because I'm seeing people who are not of the, the, you know, the faith or even from the Middle East as a whole, starting to make the connection and then repping the Palestine, you know, the Palestinian struggle. Like, yo, I'm with, I'm with Palestine on this mm -hmm. because of their Arab friends or their Middle Eastern friends and how they've educated them on the process. So I'm looking at this generation, like, hold up. If you're an OG who has gotten away from, or who like you were able to get to where you are, cause let's, and I don't know the details if Khaled did or did not, but I'm saying if you were able to get to your success without having to rep the fullness of where you're from mm -hmm. and you came from the Middle East, I don't, this, this new generation is not going to let you slide with that. Like, nah, you came from our country. We need that on front street. You know, like that's a demand and we have audiences and we're just going to, cause he did the same thing. So turned off his comments and they've been off for going on three, four months now. Really? Been off. Yeah. His comments been off for three, four months. So it's like, that's gotta be hurting him. Oh. Album coming out drops, you know, partnerships and things still happening, but uh definitely i don't know i've noticed a change in how he's moving on social as a result of it so i think this new generation is not playing that like wow. yeah what was it i was um because you brought up the the generation thing oh wait no his his comments are back on i guess maybe certain certain ones yeah maybe certain like i've ones. i've seen i've seen his post where like there's like seven or ten comments on it but, but there's like nine comments only. That's what Maybe I mean. Deletes, I don't know what. Ah, uh, he probably, they probably delete because he has, that, that makes no sense. He has some form of restriction on there. Yeah, because so there, uh, as, as we're recording, there was one about like, let's say his son, right? 16, uh, 16 comments only. Uh, and, but that got, 16,000 likes. There's one that's uh 61,000 likes only has nine comments. So yeah, there's yep, there's yep, some yep, there. Yeah. There's he's restricted the comments or done something, but I've like, oh, okay, he's he he knows he's getting a lot of heat for it. And so yeah, shout yeah, out I to don't, his social media manager, because that that's for real. That that's a there's one he's in front of the Maybach, 173 thousand likes it got 12 comments that is mm -hmm. oh yeah shout out to i think her name is jamie uh mm -hmm. shout out to to her because that's that's a whole new restriction that is I, I was i think it was uh from diary ceo podcast and somebody was talking about like yo this generation is different like you were saying where they um they're more about authenticity, right? Yeah. So, for example, they, they were talking about Tinder, right? At the, the dating app. And so where, you know, millennials would say, hey, for a second date, uh, it's got to be about looks, of course, right? For, uh, what, is it, what are they, Gen Z? Or whatever. The generation now is more of, can I be myself? Are mm. are you allowing me to be myself? And are do I feel like you're genuine? Because I'll rock with you if you are a genuine person as well, right? So yeah. you you are on the money with that. It's like th th there is there is a level of authenticity and realness that is being demanded because they've seen too many characters or uh a facade of, of, of too many things and events that now they're like, give me something real. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. They're not hiding or muting that. Yeah. No, not at all. Yeah. Not a, sorry for the side note. Um, shout out to Bima, but 
Let's get into the uh, question of the week. Yeah, wow, I, I just looked at the time, too. We're here. We're here today. Hello. Yeah, we're here today. So, question Hello. of the week. This segment is sponsored by theflightassessment.com. Discover your superpower, your personal superpower. Learn how to use your superpowers to become a master communicator. Strengthen all your relationships and develop the self-awareness you need. To fulfill your highest potential, go to flightassessment.com. Now, I saw this uh, this very interesting clip. Uh, shout out to Chris Doe. We, we cover you a lot on this podcast, it feels like. You're almost like a third person on here. So, mm-hmm. A lot of people that feel like they're just guest co-hosts. So the question is, is it quiet? For Gary V is his time up like but also how do we avoid this question ever coming up about ourselves not just Nikki and Moose but like the listener as well you guys how can we avoid this so I saw this clip and uh just we just had to talk about it is Gary's content that good? Has he said anything new? If you want to be famous, make 100 predictions, only talk about the three that you get right. He ain't talking about Snap anymore. It's crazy, Snap's still a viable platform, but nobody I know uses Snap. NFTs, I know we all loved them at one point. It's kind of a graveyard out there, right? If Gary were actually to sit down to write some content and be more intentional in the way he creates, he's gonna grow again. But it's all over the place, man. His team is just trying everything left and right and center. His posts don't look the same. They don't sound the same and they're just trying stuff and he's getting killed on LinkedIn, on YouTube. It's not getting that kind of reach. It's almost sad to me. Like I'm rooting for him in a way, but I'm like, there's democracy here. We are moving towards an egalitarian social media space. First off, what's egalitarian? I should have looked that up. Swear to God, I'm about to look it up right now. I was like, what does that even mean? I don't... you thought I was playing, like literally as you were saying that. Ah, you think that, I'm playing. Uh, I don't, I don't yeah, know. Ah, what does yeah, it say? Right there. Relating to or believing in the principle that all people are equal and deserve equal rights and opportunities. So it's uh, it's another way of saying equality, maybe. Okay. All right. Egalitarian. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So uh, your take on uh, on what... Chris said, and then also on the same note, how do, how could we avoid someone ever creating content about us in that same light? That. Yeah. 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 So for, for one, I, uh, I don't follow Gary Vee, so I don't, I don't know the full details of, of what, you know, what Chris is talking about there, but I do, I can understand what he's saying because I know the personality of Gary V. Mm. Gary V is a hyperactive, hyper motivated, a type person who is doing 934 things in in two minutes, right? Yeah. Like he's just constantly on the go all the time. He he I don't think he drinks coffee. Like he's one of those people. So with that comes chaos. And if the beautiful thing about chaos is that you're not afraid. You don't see rules. You don't see lines. You go. And for the longest time, social media needed that audacity. Like they needed people who were just absolutely off the wall to break through the noise, to stand out. It was a volume game and they were, they won just off of that. And and I think that's a lot of how Gary won on social. I know his business portfolio, he had his dad's business. He has other businesses that have made it successful in that light. But I'm saying specifically on social, he's won strictly off of playing a volume game, period. Mm -hmm. He, he, he said the things that people were afraid to say. He showed up more than people. He was consistent. He works extremely hard. So we can't discount any of that, but to go back to the point that we just made about this generation, they are different. And you just have to accept the fact that while the OGs have set the stage, eventually the new creators start to form new ways for how things should go or how things will go on a platform. And this new generation isn't really on volume like that. Right. right? Like they're just moving different and literally on volume in terms of like the, the quantity and volume in terms of the noise, like they're a quieter generation. I feel like they're more chill and laid back. Like they take their time to really explain thoughtfully 
and in detail what they mean. <laughs> like I'm noticing all of that with this generation. So I think that's why he is maybe not as popular. Mm -hmm. But what I will say, the way to not end up having someone or any content come out, your name, your brand about you like that, it goes back to what you said in the very beginning about Alexander. At some point you have to do the total opposite of what worked for you. Yeah. So if chaos worked for you, I'm being honest, if chaos worked for you, you have to start saying, hold up, how can I be more tactful, strategic and mindful of what my next several moves are about to be? Mm -hmm. Because at, it, at some point it's the law of diminishing return. Like you're gonna do more and get less as a result of what you're doing and you're not gonna see any growth. Growth requires innovation and change and taking into consideration what's happening, not taking for granted that because you're on top and, and have been on top for a while that you'll always be there. So people who make that adjustment, who are willing to receive feedback and say, all right, I know I'm the leader, but let me listen. Mm -hmm. Let me see what these brilliant people who are working with me, what do they have to say? What do they see? What do they think? Right. And let me, let, me, let me combine what's being said here for strategy and direction. So I think that's the number one way <coughs> to not have content come about to, uh, or come out to say, hey, uh, in high school, you was the man, homie. Like, you know, like one of those things. <laughs> it's like, yeah, if you, if you don't, if you want to stay on top, you, you, got, you got to change your ways. You got to adapt with times and, <coughs> um, and be mindful of that drift. Yeah. So I follow Gary and I haven't seen any of his content recently. Mm -hmm. Reason why is it's just not for me anymore. I do see what Chris is saying as far as it can be all over the place. But I don't think that's why it's not working because it's always been all over the place. Right. Mm -hmm. I think the cycle of who he's talking to, because he's not talking to the younger generation. He's talking probably to millennials and up. He's not talking to the younger one. And those people have probably went through his because he's not saying nothing new, like he said. Has yeah. probably just went through the cycle of his content and is just done. Now, there are still people who are discovering him um, and they're following him. But Chris may just be in that same uh, vibe as I am of what well, I heard everything you said. There's nothing more you're saying. You know what? I got to find something else to listen to. Because and, and this is this kind of breaks down into a whole nother thing, too, because He's been very open about saying, yo, I don't watch nobody else's content. I don't read no books. And hence why oh, maybe Chris. some of his content is kind of stale. Because he's not receiving anything new. So now I, I do respect some of the things that he's saying as far as um, like Facebook coming back to life and LinkedIn is still... Um, you know, a very underutilized platform. Those types of pieces of con yeah. uh, content and, and advice is still very useful. But like sometimes his predictions, like he said, it's quiet. I remember when he went big on audio. Everybody got to do audio. Alexa's the new thing. Da -da -da -da. Remember that time? Mm -hmm. It's yeah. quiet. It, like there's not a true focus. Uh, Alexa is just Alexa on, on its own. Siri is Siri on its own. It's not whoever. And I, of course, I said that now my, my uh, products yes, are like, off. hey, I'm here. You said my name. <laughs> right. But um, it, it's not as big as he made it sound and wanting us to prepare. But of course, you're not going to get all predictions right. So I just feel like. Once you go through the cycle of the things that Gary has said, you have to move on because he is not saying anything to to. But those people who are new to it, they're loving it. They're watching it. Yeah. Right. It, but 
it's just not anything new now to avoid uh, us uh, uh, just as consumers, listeners, uh, producers of our own. It goes more towards how are we staying relevant? Just like how I said, where he's not talking about anything new. How are we always talking about something new? How are we staying with the times? How are we evolving? This is why I love uh, certain music artists. Because there are some people who just stand the test of time. Regardless of yeah. what season it is, they are still relevant in some way, shape, or form, still staying true and authentic to themselves. So how do we stay still true to our brand, to our business ventures, to who we are, but still stay relevant in this day and age, as well as how do we tap in to the younger crowd, whether it is the parents that we're talking to, they are sharing it with their kids or whether we're creating specific type of content. I'm, I was looking at my analytics for YouTube, right? Me and Isaiah, we were going through it and realized that there was a good amount of 18 to like 21 or something like 18 to 24, I believe that was on my oh, channel. I'm like, how did you get there? So looking right. at it, it has nothing to do with my long form video, but it has a lot to do with my shorts. So what do you think is going to happen? I'm going to create more shorts, more shorts. to be able yeah. to have a well-rounded audience so the longevity of the brand can stay there. So I think, I think one, continuously being a student, but I think that's one of the downfalls of Gary Vee. He, he admits that he doesn't watch or learn anything, but he does... He, what he does do, he's very respected, so he does keep young people around. That's mm -hmm. one thing he does do. I've, I've seen him with, with up-and-coming influencers. His team is, is of young people as well. So he does keep himself surrounded by young people, which is very important when you are uh, growing your brand and growing your business is to forever being tapped in to the next thing. But just more well-rounded content is probably what's going to be needed for Gary V, but Gary V can hear this, whether from, from Chris or some of our, our suggestions. And he could be like, um, have you seen my following? Right. Um, I just looked it up. Yeah, yeah. Like, have you seen my following? Have you seen all the platforms that I'm on and the following over there? I hear you. But clearly, something is still working. So, so, so that's why I kind of like, it's worked. I, I wouldn't say if the as bad as Chris made it sound. But I know I'm out of that cycle of listening to uh, Gary Vee. And not necessarily because I've executed, like he suggests, like, I, don't, I want you to stop listening to me because you've taken all the stuff and you've executed on it. Nothing to do with executing is just, it's just not for, I, I'm hearing the same thing over and over again. And I'm like, ah, ah. Mm -hmm. But he is the right. reason why NFTs yeah. are probably still have a lifeline because of his audience and his community of how they yeah. keep that alive. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just looked up his uh, his following. Last I remember, it was like at six million. He had just a uh, ten point one million followers oh, yeah, on Instagram no. alone. So crazy. He's definitely crazy reach. Crazy. Shout out to Gary V. Shout out to Chris. Love both of y'all. Um, and if you've heard uh, this late in the game, uh, you probably should be joining Patreon. Okay. That means you love us. You're here this long. You're listening. So, like, let me shout out uh, Billy. We got Teresa. We got Brittany. We got Katrina. We got Created to Elevate. Vaughn. Shout out to Vaughn. Vaughn is one of our, like, hey. diehard listeners. And and Ms. Taylor. I love to Vaughn. Uh, all from the Creator Av uh, tier. We love and appreciate you. We always said we're going to... Uh, Shout out y'all in the in the podcast, and that's my fault. I've I missed a few episodes, so let me uh, 
recognize y'all now. And that's not to negate our Nikki and Moose squad. Shout out to y'all. Uh, four. You can start at $4 a month. That's 13 cents a day. If you support, you love us. If you listen this long, just get all the extra. We have over, what, two years worth of extra content for y'all over there. It's just, it's the really goodies. good. Okay. It's really good. We, yeah, we're about goodies, to do a man. private stream uh, within the next week or two. Yeah. Just, just, just go over there, please. And thank you. Um, of Our YouTube is taking a darn hit. So, if you love us just on a free note, just go to YouTube and just love on us over there because Jesus, we got the copyright strike off, but once it's hit, it's just, it takes a minute. So just show love to to us. Say, Nikki, we we heard you. Moose, we heard you. Yeah. We're here. We love you. Uh, so go go over there. Follow us on all social media platforms. Uh, flight assessment, extreme execution. What y'all got going on? Y'all got anything? Can we see you in no, person? No, we're, 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 yeah, no, we're super locked in on the challenge right now. Mm. Um, I'm going to be inside for a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to be inside for a little bit. So I said my goal was not to travel in January. It's looking like my goal is going to extend into no travel into February as well. And um, yeah, just uh, stay home and work hard. Okay. Okay. No, no I had, outside. I had a joke. No outside I had a joke. I had a joke and I had to yeah. just keep it in. Praise God. So, yeah. um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, Deeper Than The Brand, go check that out, deeperthanthebrand.com. We have actually, uh, depending when you join, we're having a 14-day uh, content challenge for the experience for those people who are members of that. But we also have the AI Toolkit, five-course bundle, however you want to go about it. But 14-day uh, challenge is a vibe. Uh, and then, yeah, just follow us everywhere. Okay? So, Moose. Final words. Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 torn between a couple today, but I, I will say, you know, make your plan, but just know God's plan is the best. That is my theme song right now. God's plan. Shout out to Drake. Uh, yeah, you know, this will this will make sense for y'all a little bit in the coming weeks. This will make this will make sense. And not the coming, the coming weeks. weeks, not the major rollout. <laughs> <laughs> it sure will make sense in the coming weeks. Oh man, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. <laughs> Peace, y'all. <laughs>